two presentations. The first will be a presentation on the BFA security and safety bond, and the second will be a presentation on the Maple Run Unified District School Budget. So we'll start with the bond presentation, and I'm going to turn it over to our principal, uh, Chris Mosca. Thank you, Mr. Farr. Um, so this is a brief presentation about the BFA safety and security project that will be on the ballot uh, during town meeting. There are three major components to the project. The first is renovations of the north building, and you can see uh, the need there. Also, some safety work that needs to be done in the south building. Mr. Skangis will talk about that. And finally, the need for a walkway uh, between the buildings. So, my focus will be on the walkway between the buildings. Um, this is actual footage that you can see that was from a couple of weeks ago. Um, we had a self-study report that was done as part of our accreditation work. Um, dated October 31st, 2010. Um, as part of that process, our teachers identified uh, the walkway between the buildings as a safety concern for all students. That um, was affirmed by the visiting committee that did the accreditation, and they were clear in their recommend recommendation to us that the walkway between the buildings can be unsafe. Uh, particularly in the winter, and that was in our report. As you can see from the footage, uh, the aerial shot, students and staff pass multiple times a day uh, in this area. Um, certainly a hazard. You can see the tractors and so forth uh, interacting with students and they're passing. Um, this really does present a hazard. Uh, most importantly, it also puts us in a very vulnerable position um, relative to anybody who may want to do us harm. Uh, as you know, our school safety is of paramount importance. And um, what this uh, connector will do, the link that we are proposing uh, between the two buildings will eliminate the hazards during the winter. Um, it will also ensure uh, that we are safe uh, from any uh, intruders. It will give us a centralized entrance way that will allow us to better monitor anybody um, who visits the school, and we think it will really meet many of the uh, concerns that have been expressed over the years in a very cost-effective way. Uh, the support for that <coughs> connector, a uh, hardened um, walkway between the buildings, uh, has been supported. One of our students, Haley Seymour, is also on our school board, and she talked about uh, the need to protect students not only against harsh weather, but to provide uh, safety, because right now I believe we have something like 30 entrances to the school, and this will provide one centralized entranceway. And you can see the um, video of actual students passing uh, during the time in winter uh, who are clearly exposed and, and vulnerable. Uh, Mr. Messier, who many of you may know as our choral director, um, also spoke in terms of support for the project. School Resource Officer Mr. French uh, said that this project, which will of course be the connector between the buildings as well as the work on both the north and south sides, is great for safety, stopping people from wandering through campus and having a better sense of control as to who enters um, our, our school. And Dr. Durth, the superintendent, uh, said that the project will do much to um, correct many of the safety and security issues that have been a challenge. And as you know, we do worry about our kids both day and night, and we think that we're putting everyone, both students and staff, in a much safer position uh, with the building of a walkway between North and South. So um, I'm going to turn this over to our architect, Mr. Skangas, who's here, and I also want to mention uh, Dino Pensouris, uh, who works at the Tech Center, who's been instrumental in our work in presenting uh, the need for a safety and security project to you. Thank you, Mr. Skangas. Thanks. Um, there are three components, as Mr. Mosca has uh, talked about, the old hospital, the south buildings, and then the connector. 
and we'll just orient everyone. So we're talking about the old 1889 hospital, all of the south buildings, and then a link between the two. And we'll start 89, 1889 hospital building. Uh, a lot of the work has to do with, as uh, you'll see in this fly through, for the brick, brick needs to be repointed. There's damaged brick that needs to be replaced. There are sections of the exterior brick wall that needs to be rebuilt. Um, the parking lots, we need to change the pavement and base, and put down new pavement and base. Uh, the tower here, the metal roof needs to be repaired and repainted. There are existing windows that need to be replaced. All the exterior doors will be replaced. Uh, new exterior lighting will be provided at the exterior. Um, trim and clapboards that are damaged or rotten uh, will be replaced and those will be painted. There are two membrane roofs on flat roofs that uh, have reached their age and need to be replaced. And there's also some structural reinforcement we have to do at the floor in the kitchen and the cafeteria. At the south building, um, when we did the pack, one of the conditions was that all the buildings had to be sprinkled at the south campus. Uh, during the pack design, they uh, made us sprinkle the stage and the three stair towers that the kids use now. So in preparation for that work, we brought a new six inch uh, water line up from Main Street through the parking lot, in between and into the back of the auditorium. So the original high school is ready to be sprinkled. The water's there, the supply is there, and we can go. The other piece we did is before this turn, we did a little stub. So now we can bring water into the gym addition building, and then we can also sprinkle the gym in the Northwest Tech Center. The other piece that we're doing at the South Buildings is currently there are three existing transformers that are inside the building. They're located where the tech center and the gym addition meet. Um, when they were built, it was okay by code to have them inside the building. But as you can see, there's bare wires. Um, they, they're just unsafe, and code no longer allows that. So we will build a new transformer on grade outside and bring a new service to the building. And then the third component of this project is the connector. And these are just some views so you can see kids walking outside. Uh, doesn't matter what the weather is. So we will be making a physical connection between the buildings. This just gives you an aerial shot to orientate you. So it will be a connector. There will be a secured vestibule coming in. There will be a reception area which will have a conference room, an office, and a bathroom. So faculty, staff can actually meet with visitors and not bring them into the school. Now when you come to the school, you're not sure where you're going, but when you do come in, you're entering in the school mingling with the kids. This uh, <clears throat> provides some protection in that they don't, visitors don't have to go into the school itself, but they can if they're escorted. Um, the other piece that we're doing is we're also relocating the buses here, which gets us another 22 parking spaces over here. In the morning, kids will still come to school the same way that they do. It's really for visitors and bus drop-off that we're using as centralized entrance. So this is a view from Main Street. Um, you can see the walkway and the stair that gets you down to this lower parking area. And then this is a view after the connector is uh, constructed, what it would look like. Chris? Uh, thank you, Laz. Uh, just in summary, we think that um, this <coughs> project, uh, safety and security project, is very practical, very sensible, and cost effective. Uh, that meets the needs of our students uh, for now and for many, many years to come. And uh, it's received the support of our school board, and we look forward to your consideration on town meeting day. Can you just also offer for the audience a timeline, or did you already do that? If, it, if the bond passes, when work would start? And... 
Um, timeline, Gwyneth? If the bond passes and everything goes well, we hope to start sometime this year. It'd be nice if we could do late summer, early fall. It okay. just depends on how busy everyone is. Um, and be done by 2022. Part of the duration is that to sprinkle all of the South Campus buildings, it's going to take at least three summers. Just there's too much to do and not enough time before kids are coming back before and when they leave. So that's about what we're planning for duration at this point. Thank you. I have a question. Is it going to be secure on the north and south side of that connector also? Like, can you keep people out? Yes. Of the, yeah. Thank you. Chris, I just want to say kudos to anybody and everyone who put this presentation together. It's a huge improvement that I've seen over the last couple of weeks, and it's so clear. It, it certainly helps people, I believe, see exactly where the problems are. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have another question related to that timeline, Laz. Is um, the connector going to be completed earlier than 2022? Yes. That's yes. just going to be that yeah. extra work. We, um, we're anticipating about roughly nine months to do the connector. But it's the additional, it's the sprinkler work that the transformers will be done over summer. Um, it's the sprinkler work, and we're probably going to start with the gym and the tech center, sort of the higher hazard sections yeah. of the school. The original classroom, we could just classes, so it's, it's more where you got lots of crowds, people gathering, and some of the uh, things like, you know, the welding shop, automobile shop. We're going to do those to sort of increase that safety as we move along. Thank you. Uh, Lance, it could be that some people watching this don't understand what sprinkling means. Uh, you know, I mean, I think most of us do. Uh, but there could be some citizens who, you know, when you say you got to sprinkle the building, is that a garden hose outside or, you know, maybe I'm being facetious or no, I'm no, trying not fine. to be. Basically, uh, what we call is we put the building underwater. What it is, pipes are placed inside the building and they have sprinkler heads. And if there's a fire or some high temperature, it sets off a sprinkler head. And the, the intent is that that fire is put out or it's contained so it gives you enough time to get out of the building. And I think some misconception, one misconception is people think one head goes off, they all go off. And that's not the case. It's really only one head goes off when there's enough heat to put it on. They don't all of a sudden just go off. But that basically is that you're you're protecting, giving people more time to get out of the building, and in hopes as you put that fire out, so there's nothing to worry about. So it's first public safety, people safety. The second piece is building safety. And the other uh, question, thanks for that. The other question is. Uh, Chris, will this presentation be on the website? I believe it is. You know, yes, on the yeah, website. Absolutely. Yes. Be Super. Yeah. Very, very good presentation. So, Thank great. You. So, nothing else. Thank you very much for your attention and consideration. Thank you guys. Okay, now we'll move on to the Maple Run budget presentation. Start with uh, the Maple Run Board of Directors. Again, my name is Jim Farr. Um, I'll be leaving the board this year. We got a Nilda Ganella French from the city, Steve LaRosa from the town, Susan Cassidy Magnin from Fairfield, Jeff Morrill's from the city, Nina Hunsicker is from the town, Michael Malone from Fairfield, Sally Lindbergh from the town, Al Corey from the city, and Jack McCarthy from the town. So tonight is a quick agenda. Um, we're going to introduce Maple Run, let the principals talk about their schools. We're going to talk about our uh, FY20 pre-K through 12 budget, a little bit about tax rate information and tax impacts. We're going to go over the ballots, and then we will let you know where you can vote. So who's Maple Run? 
Everyone runs a school district. We, we have one high school. We have three pre-K through eights. We have one tech center. BFA St. Albans is our high school, which includes Collins Curley, Fairfield Center School, St. Albans City School, St. Albans Town Educational Center are our pre-K through eights, and of course Northwest Technical Center is our high school. These are pictures of uh, our school buildings, and it includes our central uh, district office that we purchased on Captain Street. <coughs> And I'm going to let the principals talk about each of their schools. So, thank you. Um, so at BFA, uh, just some academic slides and some um, slides about our students' uh, relationships and experiences that all uh, comprise what we call high school. So um, we've implemented proficiency-based learning. Uh, clearly, it's designed to ensure that our students can um, communicate exactly what they know and can do in classes. Um, and it's been a very extensive project that um, taken a lot of work on the part of our staff. And I think um, we're at a place now where uh, people are understanding what proficiency-based learning means uh, and how much more effectively um, we can communicate uh, our students' growth and progress. Just a little bit of data. Um, we have a very strong uh, AP curriculum and 68% of our students had a passing score of at least three or better, which sets them up for college credit. 96.7% um, of the graduates leave our school with a documented plan for either further education or career. And uh, something I think is really important, 18 students chose to attend BFA through Act 29. So students anywhere, I think, within the state uh, have um, decided to leave their uh, schools of residence and come to BFA and those numbers look even stronger, I think, going forward next year. So I think it tells a very good story about the strength of our curriculum and our co-curriculars and that people are coming to see BFA as a school of destination. Um, part of that is our strong academic program, but also, too, relative to our um, co-curriculars, uh, we have very successful uh, girls hockey and snowboarding. We've won championships over the last year. Uh, aside from just the athletic success, it really is a very good community and spirit builder. And so many of our students uh, come to those games and we get compliments when we go down to Gutterson and uh, how well behaved and how supportive our students are. Uh, the Powder Puff football game that I know many are familiar with is in partnership with our friends from MBU and it has raised uh, this year, I think, a record over $28,000 uh, for Kim Tecumpe and the Bashaw Fund. Um, we really tried to enhance our arts program, and um, if you had a chance to see Shrek the Musical, I'm sure you would uh, realize what a fun show that was and how many students it involved. Uh, it was not only just performers from BFA, but performers from throughout the district, and we always tried to do special events, and Mike Henderson, a BFA grad, uh, gave a presentation about his experiences in the music industry that the kids were buzzing about for quite some time. So. I uh, just want to give you a flavor of our school, our academic program, uh, some of the relationships and experiences that occur here every day, and uh, your support is deeply appreciated. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Dave Campbell for Collins Pearly. Good evening. The Collins Pearly campus is rather unique uh, in that it has a dual purpose. It serves both the school and the district, and it serves the community. More than 60% uh, of use of Collins Pearly it's totally unrelated to school use, however the school use is of course the most intense. Um, Collins Pearly uh, has uh, been an active campus since 1985 and through the years its use by the community has grown by leaps and bounds. Our mission is to provide the maximum number of wellness opportunities for the maximum number of people. Wellness to one person might be lifting heavy weights to another person that might be taking a walk and to another person it might be something as simple as coming up and watching a, a sporting event or um, for that matter going to something like uh, the home show or the job fair or one of the other many, many events that we have. Collins Pro is very fortunate that we use the support from the community to offset a lot of our costs and um, this year we have been able to maintain a, a freeze on our uh, the amount of money that we need to take in from the school district based largely on that community support. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Fairfield Center School. Good evening. 
Thank you. As the smallest school in our district, I'm happy to be here representing a lovely community, uh, Fairfield Center School. We believe in HR3, honesty, respect, responsibility, and readiness to learn. And uh, one of the great things that we do at Fairfield Center School that sets us apart is our outdoor classroom program. We're getting ready to start sugaring in our sugar house. We have all kinds of vegetables that we're growing all, all the time in, uh, in our gardens. Our outdoor classroom program is really thriving and moving forward, and that's something that I'm very happy to see. Uh, we actually got back to maintaining the Chester Arthur Trail this year, so we created that trail in 2002, and now we're getting back out there to help keep it maintained so people can use it in the community. So that's a really great thing. We're building a brand new pre-K playground on the campus, and um, I put out a, a document for the community to read. I put it out in a bunch of different places in Fairfield because I wanted people to understand how wonderful Maple Run has been for our school. Uh, the benefit that we've had has been incredible and uh, we're able to share a library media specialist. We're sharing a Spanish teacher uh, bringing special uh, foreign language back into our building after many years. We're sharing with BFA um, and just kind of taking taking all kinds of advantage of what a larger school district can do with a smaller school that we couldn't do on our own. There was actually a lovely article in the newspaper just last week about that, so I'll point you to that for more information. But at Fairfield Center School, we, uh, we believe that we make a difference in the world. We believe that our kids can move mountains, and I'm just very happy to represent us. Thank you. In Alton City School, John. I'm John Cabell, the principal at St. Alton City School. Um, we've had a really exciting year for us. Uh, we've been doing an awful lot around technology and around um, individual learning for, in, for students. And this year we were awarded the um, the School Technology, um, the National School Technology Award for Student Voice. And we had students that went to Washington, D.C. There were six students that went and represented um, our school and did an absolutely amazing job on a stage with 300 adults in the audience. And really were able to share in detail the type of things that they're doing. We followed that up with a webinar where another six students got to be online. And we've now had over a thousand hits for our webinar. So over a thousand people have watched our webinar worldwide. And our students were amazing dealing live with questions coming across a webinar. So a lot of the investments that we've made both in the technology, but also in actually using the technology to personalize education for our students are really paying off. Um, just last week, the Tarrant Institute came with a 360 camera so that they could put it in the center of our makerspace. And a bunch of our students that uh, work in the make makerspace often were there. They were all interviewed and had a lot of poise on camera, just really being professional and comfortable and knowing what they're talking about. So we're really excited to have that and we'll be posting that on our website so people can actually see the 360. That was taken by the Tarrant Institute. And in between all that kind of stuff, we actually do a whole bunch of other academic things. Um, but these are the things that I think um, in a child's day are the things that they're gonna remember, not just um, for the next grade when they need it, but in their life later on because of the type of memories that um, it's just so special to have. So I'm really proud to be part of a school that's um, so embraced technology and actually using it. Thank you. And in Say Tech, we have the little stuff. Angela Stebbins, the principal of St. Albans Town Educational Center. The first thing I wanted to highlight tonight is one of the great benefits of the unification and the um, forming of Maple Run. We have on staff uh, teaching general music to fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, Alex Charpentier, and the remainder of his time is spent teaching strings to the students in every single school in the Maple Run Unified School District. That includes BFA and, and all of the K-8s. It's, it's an amazing program. He actually had, in the concert he held um, at SATEC in January, there were 25 students. He, there were some Fairfield students that joined us. 
and they sounded amazing. So it was just a really great opportunity and wonderful, um, wonderful experience for our students. Throughout the year, all our students work on service to the community. They um, collect items for the food shelf, um, for the Humane Society, and they participated in the community Operation Happiness. One of our learning communities has an annual event where they collect uh, diapers uh, for the DPT uh, Great Diaper Drive, and they are, they've got huge numbers of diapers that they've collected um, for the needy. We have um, in our school um, younger um, and older reading buddies, so students get together. We use the opportunity, middle school students get together with kindergarten, first and second graders, and it's a really great experience for the students to have an older uh, mentor and a student that, that helps them learn to read. This year, SATEC received uh, a $15,000 Farm to School grant, and we were actually one of the last K-8s to receive this grant, but it's a really great opportunity to uh, bring good nutrition for our students and education about nutrition and, and connecting um, to the local farms and, and that information for our students. So we're just getting started with that. We're going to have a coach and get that going. And the other thing that's really important to us is wellness, and that includes opportunities for our students. Um, there's JP for our fifth and sixth graders, and I didn't put it up there, but many of our classrooms have received RISE Vermont awards. Too numerous to mention, but that's bringing mindfulness and movement and yoga and things into the classroom, which really helps um, improve student learning. We also have a focus on the adults, because the adults, it's important to keep them well and keep them healthy. And Lisa Sutton is our building wellness leader, and she just recently received a thriving rock star award for all the work that she does within um, SATEC, but she's also on the bigger um, Maple Run Wellness Committee. And the last thing that we added this year, it's a great highlight, um, both in fifth and sixth grade and seventh and eighth grade, we have news programs, student-run news programs, so they get to use their technology skills as well as their public speaking skills, and it's a great opportunity for them to learn in this way and do some writing. So. That's some highlights about Safe Tech, Steve. Just a comment. I, my kids are 10, 15 years from Safe Tech. Uh, right. I'm happy to see the younger, older reading buddies. So they love that. Oh, I know. Isn't that great? Really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah we're still still plugging away at it, so I right. appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And that brings us to the Northwest Technical Center. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Leanne Wright. I am the director of the Northwest Technical Center. We are one of 17 career tech technical education centers in the state of Vermont. Uh, we have two sending high schools. One is BFA and the other is MBU. And uh, this is just a highlight of some of the many things that we do at our technical center. Uh, Work-based learning is something that happens in each one of our programs. So all of our students within their programs get to go out into the community and explore careers. And then also the flexible pathways is really important. Uh, we partner with our sending high schools to make sure that learning fits for students. Um, so working with the Technical Center to make sure they can take advantage of our career and also make sure that they can fulfill their academics. Community service is a highlight of our student learning, as it says there. Um, in the November and December, we participate in Operation Happiness. And then um, through our student organizations, we also support um, muscular dystrophy and also um, Camp Tecumta, which is in South Carolina, I believe. And that's through DECA and Skills USA. And then in May, we have a school-wide community service where every single one of our students and our staff go out into the community, <coughs> excuse me, and they uh, participate and support um, our community there. Um, we see ourselves as leaders, as um, the career, as the career exploration. And so every single one of our eighth grade students participates in a hands-on activity within our programs. So they get to choose two programs that come to our school, and um, then they get to decide if they want to participate in ninth or tenth grade. And then, of course, we have our Career Development Center, uh, where we offer training for adults, but also for our high school students. So we want to make sure that they upskill and they're ready for what comes next after high school. And none of this could be possible without our, our staff. So I wanted to make sure I give a shout out to them as well. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. So those are the schools of Maple Run. And I think um, you can see why we feel so strongly about our district and why we think we're in such a great place. Really impressive schools. So now we're going to move to the pre K through 12 budget. Um, quick overview. The first thing I'd like to mention is that this budget was adopted on 16 January, almost six weeks ago. And at that time, 
Um, <clears throat> since that time, we understand that the number of uh, students that we have, the uh, equalized, equalized, people. equalized people count, um, is actually higher than we thought it was then. Um, but we had to warn our budget at that time in January, so we had to go with, with this number. However, we feel that, feel strongly that the number is going to be more like this for the uh, per pupil spending, which means instead of a 2.56% increase from this year, it's actually going to be just over 2%, 2.17% over this present year. So, um, throughout this presentation, you'll see these numbers because that's what's going to be on the ballot. Um, but keep in mind, and I'll keep reminding you, that we, we strongly think that this is really going to be the number. So, moving forward, our expense budget, $57,312,798. Again, we think it's a 2.17% increase in per pupil spending over the present year. How does this break out? 70% uh, of the budget goes to regular education. Probably one dollar in four goes to special ed. And then the remaining goes um, just over 2.8 million, 5% to the tech center. And this breaks down as follows. 75% of the budget is in salary and benefits. Um, school is, is heavily human resources and, and that's no secret. 13% of our budget is in tuition, transportation, property services, 5% for contract services, 5% is supplies and equipment, and then 2% is the miscellaneous dues, fees, and debt service. Breaks down like this, 21.5 uh, 21 million goes to the instruction, about 1.4 million to high school and vocational tuition, over five and a half million into student support services, 4.2 million into admin services, almost five million for operations and maintenance security, student, transporta student transportation services is about one and a half million, just under a million for long-term debt, adult education is 165,000, special ed services 14 million, and the Northwest Technical Center, as I said, about 2.8 million. So that, that adds up to our, our total budget of 57,312,798. So how do we get our tax rate? Well, we start with our <coughs> proposed expense budget, 57 million. We subtract off any of our local revenues, which in this case is about 17 million, and that gives us an education spending of about 40.2 million, 40 million dollars. This is the money that will come from the state. We take our equalized pupil count, which Six weeks ago it was 2,543. Um, now we think it's 2,552. We divide this into this, and that gives us our uh, education spending per equalized pupil 15 of 15,837. That we we throw that into the state's magic formula, and that gives us a tax rate of 1.4848. Because we're in the third year of our merger. We have a six cents uh, incentive from Act 46, so we subtract the six cents, and that leaves us with our estimated tax rate of 142.48. Once again, we expect that to be lower because our pupil count is higher. Okay, so what we do with that 142.48, um, each community then has a CLA, which stands for Common Level of Appraisal, that gets divided into that. The CLA is kind of a fudge factor that puts every community on a local or on a uh, level <coughs> playing field. It takes uh, so if you have a community that's been um, appraised recently versus one that was appraised a while ago, the CLA will make adjustments for that. It looks at what what property is selling for uh, versus appraised value, and it, the state comes up with this number. So for St. Albans City in Fairfield, the number is right around 91%. The town is 101%, almost 102%. So you take that 142.48, you divide it by the CLA, and these will be the tax rates for the, the uh, individual communities. St. Albans City in Fairfield will be right around $1.56. The town will be just about $1.40. So if we want to compare that to where we were last year, 
the same rates with the CLAs from last year are these numbers here. And if you take the difference, you'll see that St. Albans City is about half a cent higher. Uh, St. Albans Town is about two cents higher. And Fairfield is about a third of a cent higher in the tax rate. This is the same, the same information presented a little bit differently. Here we have the same tax rate. These are the CLAs. These numbers is this divided by this. We can see these tax rates. Once again, it sounds like a broken record. We expect this to be lower because our student count is actually higher. Okay, so this is a this is an interesting chart. It's a comparison of when Maple Run started, which was uh, I guess FY18. FY17 was the last year that the before the merger, and you can see what the tax rates were at that time. So our first year, I mean, it looks really good, but the truth of the matter is this includes our merger incentives. So we got 10 cents from the state on our, on our tax rate, which is why we're, that brings us down to here. So that was, that's our first budget. Our next year, the one we're in now, so during this year, we lost 2 cents of our incentive. Um, so that makes up part of this. The other part is the district was just getting its feet underneath them. We, we had to uh, consolidate teachers' contracts, support staff contracts. We had a brand new health care system. Um, we had a lot of redundancy that we had to deal with. So, um, so that brought us up to $1.43, um, which is still pretty good compared to where we were. But this is the year that I find so interesting. Because this is the year we, we lost another two cents in our incentive. Uh, we had salary increases of about 3% across the board. We had health care increases that were double digit. And with all those things, we still came in slightly lower than we were last year for our rate. About a year ago, the board tasked our administration with looking outside the box. We told them, find ways to, to um, Think outside the box. We want you to be more efficient. Um, Reevaluate how jobs are done. Reevaluate how personnel are spread. And you're going to be measured on efficiency, equity, and opportunity. Well, this is the this is the measurement on the efficiency part. And I I think it's safe to say they not only stepped up at the plate, but they knocked it out of the park. They exceeded all expectations on this part. And, and I want to publicly acknowledge and personally thank them for the work they've done. All the principals and administrators, you really did a great job on making this happen, and I just want to say thanks for that. So back to our taxes. So what will this tax rate mean for our project? Well, if your house is two hundred thousand evaluated at two thousand dollars, in Fairfield we're talking about a seven dollar a year increase. The city you're talking about a twelve dollar a year increase. St. Albans Town a thirty six dollar. We get a little more granular. This is just Fairfield. A home of $100,000 would be a $3 increase. And as we step all the way up to $300,000, that would be a $10 a year increase. Do the same thing in St. Albans City. We range from $6 on a $100,000 home to $18 on a $300,000 home. And I'm finally in the town. For a $100,000 home, you're looking at $19 a year. $300,000 would be $54 a year. Um, keep in mind, this does not reflect any income sensitivity at all. So if you fall into, uh, into that situation, I mean, your taxes are going to Also, I, I just want to emphasize that these are our best estimates. Um, we still need some numbers. Um, state legislature needs to set the yield, and that will affect all of this. But this is the our best estimates at the with the information that we have. Okay, so that covers the budget. Now we'll talk about the ballot. This is what you'll see, Article 1 and Article 2. Um, we have the election of a clerk and treasurer. The same person is running for both. I think the only person. Pretty easy. Article 3 is your school board directors. Um, we have one race, and that's the one in Fairfield. Have two people running for one seat, and then the other, uh, the other areas we have uh, two directors coming from St. Albans Town and one coming from St. Albans City. 
Article 4. Shall the legal voters of Maple Run School District authorize the Board of Directors to borrow money not in excess of anticipated revenue for the school year? Um, we do this every year. Um, what this allows us to do is to borrow the money that the state is going to fund us so we don't have to wait for the state. And what this actually does is it, it uh, sometimes it's a, an income generator because quite often we get more money for putting the money into the savings account than we're actually paying for interest. So we actually make money on the deal. But the important thing is, is it allows us to keep the business going. Um, we have the money to pay our bills and reduces late fees. Um, and this doesn't add anything to the tax bill. Like I said, uh, a lot of years we actually make money on it. Article 5 is the Capital Improvement Fund. Shall the voters of Maple Run Unified School District authorize the Board of Directors to transfer the audit general fund balance of the current fiscal year to Capital Reserve Fund to be used for capital improvements and operations of the Maple Run District. Um, this, is, this gives us permission to take any excess money we have from last year's budget and put it into our Capital Reserve Fund, um, which is kind of a rainy day fund that we, that we use then for capital improvements. Um, and this allows us to take some of the pressure off of the need to go out for bonds because we have the money that we can save up when we need new roof or that. Again, doesn't add a dime to your tax bill. The money's already there. Just gives us permission to put it into this fund and use it for capital improvements. And Article 6, then, is the school budget. Shall legal orders of Maple Run District approve the Board of Directors to expend $57,312,798, which is the amount the Board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year beginning July 1, resulting in estimated education spending of 15837 per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil is 2.56% higher than spending for the current year. I'm just going to say it one more time. This is what the ballot says, but this number is really 15777 and this number is really 2.17%. Article 7. So the voters of Maple Run Unified School District authorize the board of school directors to issue the general obligation bonds or notes of the district not to exceed 5722153 subject to a reduction of from available state, federal grants, and aids. There won't be any. To be issued for the purpose of financing the cost of renovations to BFA St. Albans, including the installation of safety and security upgrades, the estimated cost of such being 5.7 million. I'm not going to go too much into this. We just had a presentation on this a few minutes ago. I think they covered it quite well. Okay. Uh, you can vote early. You can request uh, earlier absentee ballots anytime, um, in person, in writing, by telephone, email, or online. The latest you can request the ballots for March 5th will be on March 4th. Ways to vote it, vote your early ballot. You go to the town clerk's office before the deadline and vote. You can pick up a ballot and you can return it in mail, by mail, or bring it in. You can have the ballot mailed to you and either mail it back or deliver it back to the town, to the clerk's office before election day or at the actual polling place on election day. And if you're sick or disabled and you can't get to the town clerk's office, notify the town clerk, and they can have two justices of the peace bring the ballot to your home. We vote by Australian ballot. Six days from now, Tuesday, March 5th, the polls are open from 7 to 7. If you live in Fairfield, you will want to go to the Fairfield Center School. St. Albans City will vote at City Hall. And St. Albans Town will vote at Collins Pearl. Thank you very much, and I can take any questions anyone has, and I will pretend like I know the answer, but more than likely I will shift it to somebody who does. <laughs> I was wondering, maybe for the, the viewing audience, you mentioned the yield from the state. If we have maybe a little uh, explanation of that, um, how that affects uh, the tax rate. I'd be glad to turn that over to Martha. Um, well, the yield is just a one of the pieces of the calculation that the state uses to, to uh, calculate the statewide tax rate. So um, the statewide tax rate is a dollar, and the yield they adjust the yield to um, make sure that they generate enough funds once all school budgets have been adopted and voted on and passed 
um, they adjust the yield to uh, make sure that they generate enough income to cover those budgets that are passed. Most recently, I heard I think they are going to change. The, I mean, they, most likely they will are, anyway, but pretty much every year they change the yields. They give us a, a figure to start for our uh, budgeting process and to be able to bring information to the voters. They give us an estimated yield rate, usually around December, uh, but that actually doesn't get finalized uh, until usually around May or June by the legislature. And it's it's an inverse relationship, right? The higher the yield goes. The lower the your taxes. Tax rate, yes. So I know some years they they move money around artificially keep the yield up. Right. Um, so it's and so far I think budget most budgets have come in over four percent higher than last year. And they were they were the original yield number was planning about three point four percent, something right. like that. So I just wanted to clarify on the ballots that um, Tomorrow is really the last day. You can ask the clerks to mail the ballots to you, and then you would still have to get someone to bring the ballot to the election. You can't send your neighbor down to pick up your ballot in person. You have to um, either go yourself or you have to have it mailed, and tomorrow is the last day for that. Okay. I had a uh, budget question. I apologize if I, this was presented earlier. Was looking for the library on Main <laughs> Street. Okay. Still learning the campus down here. Um, the, it wasn't in the documents here, but there was some question about the cost of the assistant superintendent um, in the overall budget. And I believe that's something that's already decided, so it's just an up or down vote on that. But um, just the um, justification for adding more staff and expense to central office uh, versus more teachers or other faculty sure. and staff. And I'll let Kevin speak to this in a minute. Um, uh, we did do a lot of repurposing um, where we've, we've got, we've moved jobs around in the central office, hopefully to get do it with fewer. I don't know that we're actually adding, but Kevin, go ahead. Well, we did repurpose some positions. Um, we did not add any positions. But um, what we did do, we have three people leaving this year for retirements or, or moving across the country. And so we felt it was a good time to look at the structure of the central office and how best to um, effectively work with what we've got uh, and in the schools to help in certain situations. Like we know we uh, needed additional help with um, what we call social emotional learning, um, the behavioral issues and you know, whatever that has been expanding throughout the state and throughout the country. So we looked at repurposing. It, we have the same number of staff, but what we did too is we took our HR director position and repurposed it in an assistant director position, uh, assistant superintendent position, and added responsibilities to that. Uh, for instance, we at one point were looking at, now that we're centralized, doing a uh, adding a facility director, um, centralized facility director. And we didn't want to add staff, um, well, we att attempted not to. So the assistant superintendent position is uh, an expanded position with which what the HR director position was. And that person will also be doing things like facility um, director, centralization of the facilities, working with the facility directors in the buildings, things like that. So um, no, it's not, ex it's, it's the same number of staff. Great, thanks. Um, is there just a follow up on that? Did it have a net impact on the total central office staff budget, or was that uh, increase, decrease level? We're still guessing on that because with so many going, you're going to have issues where maybe you're coming, bringing some people in cheaper than your more veteran people. So I'm not sure right now, but we talked with the board that 
it would probably be, um, we're looking at probably a ten or twenty thousand dollar increase when everything gets done um, within the whole centralization. But we're not sure quite yet. Because again, we're bringing in hopefully some cheaper people. Uh, cheaper people is the wrong word. <laughs> Inexpensive because they have, they haven't been around for as long. More efficient. More <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so it it's going to be regular, basically minimal. Great, thank you. Kevin, can you, can you address the, the part about the need to have someone in the role of an assistant superintendent just for operations? Well, just for operations, we're also looking. We've always had a person who is considered an assistant superintendent until until this year, and she moved on to a superintendency. Um, so the the need is great in that um, if I'm unavailable, if, if I'm in me, uh, not around, there's somebody to take over the role. Um, so there'll be somebody with a superintendent license who does that. We're, uh, I think it'll just add a lot that way. We're also looking at the fact that um, I'm not going to be around forever. It'll be a nice su succession um, plan of putting something in place there. So it's, it'll be good again to have somebody in that role. Does that help, Nilda? Yes. I knew the answer. I was just okay. <laughs> Anything else? Go ahead once. All right, thank you, everybody.